Well, welcome to our devotional here for this Good Friday service. And, um, you know, uh, I wanted to share something that I think that would be um, tied to in, in a great measure, I think, to what we're remembering here. And just as a reminder, tonight we will be having Good Friday service via Zoom. Uh, you can take a look at our meeting ID and password on our social media. But um, it, the scripture that, uh, or the title I, I decided to choose for this was devoted to him. And it's based on a scripture found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24, and it reads, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole life, or, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. I think that's just a great promise. I mean, there's a purpose of why di uh, Jesus died on the cross, and that is so that you and I could have life, but not just in one element, it's encompassing of all who we are. And uh, the scripture talks about that, you know, I think if we could expect, you know, to cling to this, right, to hold on to it, to, to claim it in fulfillment of our lives, uh, we would see so much growth and so much, um, just opportunity that God would open up for us. But I think uh, it seems that we don't see the riches of this promise necessarily all the time. I think um, we allow the, the, the distractions of this world and the, the circumstances, and I get, don't get me wrong, folks, I understand life happens, but they can take us and we, we can lose focus on these, these great promises that God gives us in his word. And it, it, it's for you. I'm here to tell you that the death of Christ, as we are going to remember, it's just not for one thing, it's for many things in your life. Yes, the most vitally important one is for your salvation, but Christ died so that you could have so much more, a life more abundant. And so I want you to listen at kind of what he talks about in this, and he talks about that God gives us peace. Uh, we all crave this in our life and it's something. But the peace that is spoken here is the peace brought by the sacrifice on the cross. And it, it, the peace that passes all understanding is kind of what it describes and a peace that only God can give. You know, we find peace in many different ways through life, but not this kind of peace, folks. This kind of peace is eternal. This is the kind of peace that only God can give. He promises to make you devoted to Him in Christ and in, 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 in the Holy Spirit. This work that happens within your life. And, you know, you know I think the riches of His promise, He knows what they can do for us. He, he sees the benefit within our life and He kind of nudges us along to get on that path to receive them. It, but Paul reminds us that it, there's a strengthening that happens, right? And it's not just found in one aspect of who you are, but he describes it in spirit, soul, and body. And I like that. I like how he describes it because we most of the time we refer to it more of body, soul, and spirit. But here you see spirit, soul, and body, which means that as believers, we allow the spirit to be the master of our life. Not the body, not the flesh, but the spirit to guide us and direct us. And, and Paul is referencing that. He's saying that it must be strengthened first by the spirit, then the soul, and then the body. And you say, well, what is that? Well, we're made up of three parts. Spirit, the inner core of, of one's being, is created to live in fellowship with God. This is where conscience is at. This is where the, 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 the spirit of, of us is where it's at. And then we have the soul. The soul is where we have the mind, right? The things that you can't find. I can crack open your head and find your brain, but I can't find your mind. The mind is found within the soul. It's the center of life. And then, of course, the body, which means all the senses that we have, all the parts that we carry. The Bible tells us that He works in all three ways through our life. The body is the aspect of where sin enters into our life. So there has to be a working in the body. There has to be. You have to learn to surrender your flesh to God because that is the entry point of the enemy's work within your life. He enters through that, that element of grasping your senses of what you smell, what you taste, what you see, what you touch, those elements that you hear. These are things that, that pull us away and then the flesh begins to take over and the cravings of that nature. But the Lord wants to work in all elements of who you are, of spirit, soul, and body. And then he adds the fact that he's going to be faithful to keep the promise, which means that 
He's going to be there to make sure that He speaks to all those elements of your life that you maybe need help in. And so the beauty of the Lord is that He just doesn't work in one way, He works in many. And some of us need direction in different ways of our our elements of our life, right? Some of us need some spiritual guidance. Some of us need some of that emotional guidance of the soul. And others of us, we need to learn how to surrender our flesh. But wherever you're at, the Lord has promised to be with you. The Lord has promised that He'll take care of you. You know, I, I, I read one place where it says, As the sun warms your body, so is the warmth of being close to Him that helps you with your devotion to Him. As we draw closer to the Lord, all of a sudden that devotion begins to increase. You want to become more devoted to Him? Draw closer to Him. And I promise you, you'll find your devotion to begin to skyrocket, that you'll find yourself wanting more and more of Him. That's the beauty of the Lord. We can never have enough. He says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I want you to see that. I want to pray with you as we on this Good Friday service this morning, as we get ready to to prepare ourselves uh, for Easter and we get ready to receive what God wants for our lives. Amen. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for everything that you have done for each of us in our lives. And Father, I do believe that there is there is so much that you want to do through us and in us, Lord. There's devotion devotion to you, Lord, and it requires the working of all that we are, and your word points us to that. It points us that you'll make this happen. He will, you'll be faithful to take care of this in our life. Thank you so, so much, Lord, because I know that in your faithfulness, Lord, there is going to be change. There'll be change in my life and through my life, Lord, as well. And so I pray that you continue to work in our lives as you continue to pull us closer to you, draw us closer to you, however you want to describe it. Lord, you are doing a work within our lives. And I do believe, God, that there is an element of surrender that we need to, uh, well, just give into, Lord. And so I pray that we would do that. I pray blessing over your children now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his may me make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you. And may he give you peace throughout this week. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Lord bless. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. And again, as a reminder, tonight we do have our Good Friday service. It is going to be on on on. Uh, um, on uh, Facebook Live. Here I am trying to remember. It's going to be on Zoom. I apologize. And, um, you know, we're going to be utilizing Zoom as that. Again, um, you'll find the invitation for that on our social media as well as the meeting ID and passcode. And we want to invite you to, um, you know, this is going to be one of those last times we're going to be doing it on Zoom. And then moving forward, we're going to begin to, to step into the, the, the sanctuary throughout the week. But again, join us. I mean, this is a great way for us to stay connected. Um, and I believe it's a great outcome outlet. It's not, it's not the standard. It's definitely a substitute, but um, let's utilize what God has blessed us with. Amen. I'm looking forward to see you. Lord bless.